Namaste. My name is Abraham Verghese, here before you to share my experiences, my views about the 45 years that, or rather, with the experience of 45 years that I have had in the UK. I have been asked to give my answers to a few questions that are provided in this book and I will do my best to try and give a balanced view so that it will be easier for you all to make up your minds as to which direction or what you think is best and what you think is not so good or not good enough for you. Please understand that my answers or my, my extempore uh, answers to these questions are not exhaustive, they are not complete, and I don't pretend to be, uh, to have done either. What I can do is to share as much as I can in the limited time that I have to convey these messages. The next question is, advertisements are influencing us in a negative way. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Now, today advertisements occupy what we as viewers often think is a suspiciously excessive time period in the program that we wish to actually watch. Besides, a lot of them are of no interest to us. But we must bear in mind that some of these advertisements, or quite a lot of them, are useful to people who are seeking more information about products that are available in the market, about prices, about quality, about uh, the distribution, and a variety of other matters that are important for companies or private individuals set up in setting up as firms and trying to spread their word so that they attract more people into the product or into the system that they wish to uh, control and that they wish to run. Sadly, when we complain about advertisements taking too much of our time uh, as far as the program is concerned, I'm afraid I do share that sympathy. I do feel that advertisements often portray the negative aspects of certain matters and have very often conveyed a negative message. To me, this is because it lacks professionalism, it lacks clear, clear clarity and thought as to what they really wish to convey. There seems to be an emphasis on English rather than towards the native language. And there are some advertisements that are insulting to our nature and to our way of life. In other words, people who have prepared this and people who have accepted it have not done their homework or they are careless and disregard the feelings, thoughts and emotions of others in this country. One of the most outstanding issues that I have seen in India that has hurt me very badly is that uh, there is a kind of cream that displays as its name as fair and lovely. We are a nation of colored people. In fact, we are a nation of all kinds of people having all kinds of colors. Just like our nation has all kinds of weather systems, from snows to the rivers to the mountains to the plateaus and to the oceans. 
We also find that the advertisers abuse their feeling that they have got full entitlement to our screens at the time of their choosing and the producers and directors of these programs because they depend upon advertising a great deal abuse our rights also in the use of the television. Let me see if I can explain this uh, a little bit better. In my understanding, I purchase a television. It is my television. It is my screen. If I wish, I do not need to see anything on that screen. But at the same time, if I do, I pay a price for varied periods of time to watch certain programs. Maybe for each month, maybe for each season, maybe for six months, maybe for 12 months, maybe for two years. A lot of it also varies upon the kind of discount that the producers and advertisers are able to uh, 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 invite us um, or incentivize the need for us to see advertisements. Now, when I buy a package to observe, to watch, to enjoy, to relax, to laugh, to cry, to study a particular program, I expect that I will be able to watch it without any interference. I can understand the time periods given for advertisements because that is also, after all, part of the business of the net that is actually providing you the program. But what I find abhorrent and impinging upon our rights is when they put in several advertisements, several uh, parts of the screen, using several parts of the screen, and effectively limiting the viewer to a smaller section of the screen than the advertisements. And this happens during the program that we are watching. Even if they meant well by giving us more information, I can't understand how a human being is going to read all those advertisements in a flash of a second before the scene changes or before they move on. This is nothing but abusive conduct of the rights of the individual, of the private individual, to enjoy his program for the monies that he has paid on his own television. Now, advertising has got many positive effects, such as telling you the right medicines, giving you more guidance in certain areas. They have got a very limited time to uh, convey that message to you. Some are absolutely hilarious and quickly get the message into your mind. Or at least, if you don't go and buy that product, you will remember the advertisement for its lightheartedness, its joke, and its ability to make you laugh. Yet there are others that depict people riding motorcycles without helmets, people driving cars without seat belts, people using the center of the road contrary to the rules of the, of the road. They are not shown as occupying the left lane uh, as the right way of driving. They disclose many other material that are wrong and very much against the law. The fact that many people don't get caught or are allowed to get away with it for some purpose or the other or by some means or the other does not answer the subject. We are also taught, uh, I, you know, I just saw an advertisement of, uh, I think, it was a chocolate and a young man standing with his leg raised 
uh, with his one leg raised and leaning against the wall and having his chocolate, enjoying his chocolate, no doubt. While the other leg was properly planted against the pavement or on the pavement, and there was an old lady who was sitting fairly adjacent to her. She was an elderly lady that anybody with the right mind would always try and keep out for, keep a lookout for, in case she needed any help. Something dropped out of her hand and the young man just stood his ground and behaved nonchalantly, thinking that it was cool. Now, to add misery to this concept, the lady goes, bends down, walks along and picks up a possession, during which time a heavy object falls on the chair, on the bench that she was sitting. And she thanks him for saving him, for saving her. It just doesn't make sense. It is vulgar. It is demeaning. And it, consists, you know, and it shows an attitude of utter carelessness and disregard for other people. Advertisements can also be, as I've said before, positive to the extent whereby we learn material, we learn things that we did not you know about before, and we are regular users of it. That is very constructive. Then there are programs in which experts come and in a brief period direct your minds to focus upon something that is being put in the market which is very helpful to you. So advertisements have advantages provided they are balanced, do not take up your space, your rights, are able to nail the point fairly and squarely and communicate with you in a manner and in a language used correctly so that you can understand it and benefit out of it and contribute towards the sale and progress of the companies that have spent considerable amount of monies to have their product or their services advertised. Thank you very much. Namaskar.